but it was a good chapter. Yeah, I've learned some things from this that I, oh, I learned a lot. Um, let's see, let me pull my screen. Okay. Uh, so since it's just us, maybe I'll kind of like try and just cover the, because it was a long chapter, so I'll just try and cover the things that are maybe like more interesting and more in more depth. Um, maybe I should go, I wonder if I could do full screen. Oops. No. You're good. I'm okay. Good. Um, so yeah, this chapter is about uh, basically like indexing, subsetting, and also like functions that return indices. I would say a lot of the helper functions that it describes are functions that uh, return an index that you can then use to subset. Uh, uh, I got a cat here that you can use to subset a vector or uh, something else. Um, so the and I'm gonna go through like in roughly the order that he describes the things, but some of the exercises I'll weave back in. I mean, I did focus a little bit more on split since I thought that was interesting, the split function. Um, so this, you know, I think is familiar to everybody. It's uh, these two functions, head and tail, will return the first six or uh, last six elements of a vector respectively. And I think I think you can configure it with an argument to return a different, uh, you know, different number of elements. But that's those are kind of like the, the starting points for our adventure. But the real kind of... Uh, the big, the big function of the day is this uh, bracket function, um, and so I was, I didn't, I didn't know this, but so like the bracket is a, like a function in R. Like if you put the uh, quotation marks around it, you can call, uh, you know, you can use it as a function in other functions. You can, you know, find out how many methods it has. You can call help on it. Um, so it, it's, I, I didn't actually realize that. So that was kind of a fun thing for me. So yeah, it's, it's this function, but it has tons of different methods. It behaves differently for vectors and, and for lists and for, uh, you know, other custom object objects from people's own packages. So it's a, a very flexible, but kind of deceptively uh, complex uh, function. Uh, so this is just the basic usage of it for, for one dimensional vectors, at least. Uh, so uh, if you want, for instance, in that first code block, the first element of a vector, you just put one in the uh, in between two brackets after the vector and you get you get that element so and so that's a difference i guess with python is that our index starts at one and and not zero so that's something to to note um you can uh get the last element of a vector by using the length argument so that's like the first i guess function that we're going to see in this chapter that uh returns something that we can use as an index so that's uh so you know length returns uh, the you know number of elements in the vector, and then you take that, and it gives you the the last element. Uh, and you can also use this colon uh, notation to return uh, to to represent all the numbers uh, between two numbers inclusive. So you can do x all the numbers between one and three uh, inclusive, and then you get the first three elements. So that's all probably pretty familiar. Um, you can use both numeric and logical vectors with this uh, subsetting function. And this is something that actually confused me for a long time, because uh, I always thought you had to use which, this function which, if you wanted to use a logical vector, but you don't You don't have to. Um, so, uh, you know, if you pass a logical vector of the same length as your, uh, as your vector or, or not, and it just, or it'll, and it'll use a recycling rule, it'll just return, uh, you know, one element if there's a true and, and no elements if there's a false. So you can see here, um, we have two uh, examples of the same expression. One where we just say X, return all the elements of X greater than Y. And one where we say uh, which, uh, we will use the which function on X is greater than Y um, to return a, 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 which returns a numeric vector, which we then pass to X. But they end up being the same because the this subset of function can take logical vectors. So usually, I think it usually makes more sense to use which outside of the, the brackets. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the which will skip the NA, I think. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's the next, <laughs> the next slide, which, yeah. uh, oh wait, well, maybe I have it backwards. I'm, maybe I reversed it, but I have, I have which removes NA and the subsetting, to, maybe I've reversed it, but. Uh, I think that's good. But uh, yeah, so they, they do have different, uh, behaviors with respect to NA values, though. Um, 
So another, you know, just basics, you can pass negative values to the subsetting function to remove an element. So here you see, like I, I passed negative one to this list of, or this uh, vector of 10 elements and we just get the kind of like the, we start at the second element and then go to the, the 10th. Um, uh, right, yeah. So that's, you can see that's that second code block just shows that if you do two through 10, it's the same as just excluding the first element. Um, uh, so one kind of quirk, I guess, in, and this, I guess I'm going to start talking about the differences uh, between the use of the subsetting function on vectors versus the use of the subsetting function on lists. Um, and the first kind of quirk that uh, the author mentions is that for vectors, if you pass an NA uh, to the subsetting function, you get an NA value back. Whereas if you use it with a list, you get a null, which um, kind of makes to me, I felt like it made sense. So you basically end up getting an empty block in your in your list. Um, uh, oh, another you know useful thing is that you can, if you have a named vector or a named list, you can pass uh, the names as characters to the subsetting function, and, and it return uh, the corresponding elements. Uh, and if you pass a, a name that isn't in the vector, it will return na. Uh, okay, so here's now we're moving on to this uh, use of the subsetting function for lists, um, and it functions a little bit differently. Um, and it's because you know lists are both uh, they have kind of the top level list structure, and then the the uh, bottom level kind of underlying structure of all their different elements. So if you pass if you pass um, uh, just uh, mm -hmm. kind of a, a, if you use this uh, kind of the standard a subsetting function, it'll always return a list. It will return, so for instance, you'll see if you do, uh, if you pass one and two to the subsetting function on this list of A and B, it will return the first and second element of the list. Um, yeah, so if you, if you added a C, a it will not return it. Yeah, yeah. C equal whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so the difference, oh, I'm sad I was going to list this. Uh, see, I think we, I think we're getting a delivery or something, but, uh, uh, well, she'll, she'll get back to it. Uh, uh, so, but I mean, so you, I think know this, you know, uh, the, this double bracket function is actually a little different function and it can be used to like extract elements from a list. So it doesn't typically return a list. It usually, it returns the class of the underlying list element, which could be a list, but usually it's like going to be a vector yeah. or, or something like that. So, um, you'll see here the difference, you know, uh, if you call x single bracket one, you get uh, a list. Mm -hmm. If you call x double bracket one, you get a numeric vector. Uh, and then I, I actually didn't know this, uh, which is a little silly, but so uh, the double bracket operates recursively if you give it multiple indices, which is, is not how uh, the single bracket works. So in this example, you can see if you use the single bracket uh, on a atomic vector, you get well, maybe I should have had more examples on this slide, but uh, you can see, you know, whatever you, you yeah, can call it a single bracket. The, yeah. To, it takes right to one. Then so it, it returns. Yeah. So it, but it's really it, tricky. Yeah, it is. It's confusing. So basically, if you look at the second example, oh, it's what it's yeah, doing okay, is it's just... extracting the whole, uh, it's extracting the whole vector first. So in yeah, this the case, one. the one, so it's extracting the and vector one through 10. And sense. then if you call the double, on it again, you get it's extracting just the second element. So it's a it's different uh, uh, when called on uh, lists. It has this recursive function, which I I didn't know. I I I guess I hadn't. I don't typically use it that way, but uh, it's okay. useful to know. No, it's it's a good point of all of this chapter. Like I think this is the yeah. whole like thinking a bit more. Uh, yeah, all of, all of the option and what does it mean exactly? Because we use yeah. like fairly limited scope of the this tool. Well, for yeah. Me, yeah, no, that's yeah, because you know, I, I think a lot of stuff you you pick this up on the fly, and I, I never, you know, yeah, I've, I never even read the documentation for this uh double bracket function because I didn't know you could call help on it because uh, you know, yeah. it's it's not a word, so uh, anyhow, uh, so there are also replacement versions of these functions which you can represent uh with the, the kind of left uh arrow here. Um, and these are separate functions. They allow us to assign values at a specific index. And so I, I didn't know you can actually make your own replacement versions of things if you 
uh, uh, create a function with using the uh, left arrow on, at the end of the function's name, which is pretty cool. I, I, uh, yeah. I might do that for some of my own functions. But so anyhow, so uh, these, you know, these just allow you to assign a new value at a specific index. So pretty intuitive. Uh, let's see. So the rest of the chapter is basically just like, but usually like either functions that return an index that we can use to subset or um, functions that themselves perform some kind of subsetting. Uh, so the first is match and this this kind of special in function. Uh, so match is, is really useful, but can be a little hard. I don't know, I find it kind of confusing to think about sometimes, but um, it returns the indices of elements in X that have matching values in uh, in the documentation they call this this argument table, but I, you know, why I guess we could think of it. So if you look at the first example, you can see we have a, uh, a table uh, that just has a ton, you know, a, a ton of uh, values between one and 10 yeah. and including NA. And we have a second, uh, a smaller vector that just has five, six and NA. And if we ask match to find the values in X that have a match in table, uh, it gives us one, three and seven. Uh, so I think those are the sorry I I think I misdescribed it so that it's that those are actually the uh, the indices in table that correspond to to x sorry about that yeah I, I, think, I think so too yeah um, I have to I have to try it but let me check quickly yeah I should check too and open like a let me open quickly yeah. I have one up on here. I have too many windows. Yeah. Organize it so. Let's copy past it. Let's say table. Yeah. Let's uh, take a smaller one instead of a big one with 100 sample. Table will take a sample. Returns a vector of first matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I reversed it. I should correct that. So it's it's the indices come from the second argument, the table argument, not the uh, not the first argument. Um. Yeah, we have to check. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll correct that. No worries. I, uh, but yeah, basically, percentage in is mm -hmm. just like uh, it's gonna check uh, if it's true. Uh, and yes, uh, X is present in table. And X is basically five, six, and A, and N is present yeah. because you add it. Um, and then and, I think uh, one thing to note too is that it's returning the first match. Yeah. Uh, in the so the, even though this table is a list of one hundred, okay. or a, a vector of one hundred, it's returning just the first time it matches, which is at one three and. Is is seven. the no match? I don't remember man match. I don't remember exactly no, what this neither. argument means. No match, no match, uh, uh, zero. What's no match? The value to be returned in case when no match is found. Oh, okay, zero. Makes sense. Okay, okay. You can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can want another value if you want. Okay, makes sense. Uh, does not happen here, but yeah, yeah. And so uh, kind of a, a helper function related to match is this in function that yeah. I really like. I think everyone, everyone likes it. this function. And uh, it just, it does kind of like the opposite thing. It, it uh, returns uh, a vector uh, that corresponds to the, the indexes in X saying whether or not there's a match at all. Yeah. But, so you don't know where the match is, but you know if there is a match. Yeah. Uh, so the Another useful helper helper function is this find interval function, which I actually had never really used and and never really knew about, and I found to be pretty useful. Uh, so, yeah. is it for uh, breaks? But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had always just you you know used other uh, methods to do that, but yeah, it's great for breaks. Um, so yeah, it returns. So say you have a an interval uh, that's defined by four. Uh, points in which therefore has three kind of sections. Uh, so in this case, it's from negative infinity to 0.25, from 0.25 to 0.5, and from 0.5 to infinity. You can use this find interval function to tell you which 
of the three sections each element in X falls into. So in this case, you know, we have like a section, we have the first element in X is in the second interval, kind of the, between 0.25 and 0.5. At the second element is also in the second interval between 0.25 and 0.5, and so, et cetera, so on and so on. Um, so that's that's a really useful function. And I, it actually comes up in this uh, exercise 5.21, yeah. um, where they have us kind of write a function to find the Windsorized mean, which is just like a, a, a mean where the uh, kind of more extreme values are compressed uh, towards the, uh, towards the, I guess in this case, the first and third quartiles. Mm. Um, and, and what we're talking about the, uh, this find interval function. So it, um, uh, as we were just saying, it's, I had never heard about it and, never used it, but it's, it's pretty useful. So if you have an interval uh, that's defined by four points, uh, so in this case, like negative infinity to 0 0.25, 0 0.25 to 0 0.5, and 0.5 to infinity, you there have or have like three sections, an interval that's com you know com comprised of three, uh, three sections. And so find interval will tell you which section uh, each of your elements of a vector falls into in the interval. So in this case, if we have, you know, this X, vector uh, that is composed of uh, just a bunch of random values between zero and one, you can see that it uh, the first element falls into the second section of the interval. So between 0.25 and 0.5, the second element is also in that second section between 0.25 and 0.5. The third element also, you know, uh, falls into the third uh, section between 0.5 and infinity and, and so on. Uh, so this is, has ended up, I, I think is actually pretty useful, even though I, I didn't know about it. Um, Olivier was saying it's good to you to calculate breaks for, for yeah, plots guess. and things like um Use inside of cuts and breaks, yeah. Yeah, uh, but so here we use it to calculate this Windsorized mean, which is a mean where the like more extreme values are compressed or replaced basically with, with uh, values from the uh, first and third quartiles of the, the distribution. Uh, and so I, I don't think there's anything too crazy going on here, but, uh, you know, you can see we create uh, our... Uh, so just the name equal false, but like, it's probably like not very big deal. Sorry, what was that? The... On the oh, line wait. four, a name equal false, that's, I'm not sure, but I don't know what it does, but like that, the rest is, is straightforward. Uh, I don't know why I did that, to be honest. I think it's because... So quantiles, here's what it is. Quantiles returns a um, a vector, a named vector, yeah. and it will have like, and so the names are the, the quantiles. Oh, okay. So in this case, and so I didn't, I didn't want that because it was like you just wanted uh, like the interval. Yeah. I mean the interval, yeah. Yeah. Um. And so in this case, we create the uh this kind quantile. of sequence of points uh, using the uh quantile function. So here we have, uh, you know. I forget what he wants us. We use 0.25. So yeah, we just, we have a from, probability. Yep. Yep. A probability. Um, we can then map the quantiles to indices using this very helpful find interval function. And then to do this, I think I, I used a nested if else. So basically, if you're in the second interval, you keep your value. If you're in the first interval, you get uh, the yes. kind of like the first the, yeah. the value at the first uh, quantile. And if you're in the any other interval, so like the third interval, you get the value at the third quantile. That's right. Um, so I, I don't think there's anything too too crazy going on there, but it is a useful uh, application for this function. Uh, so that so now we got to split, which I thought was pretty fun um, because mm -hmm. I I uh, I think it's normal uh, usage is in data frames and not necessarily mm -hmm. on vectors, uh, and I have always kind of gravitated towards the dplyr group by syntax. And so it was exciting to learn how split uh, tackles a similar problem. Um, so that's what I've said first year. You know, I think it's yeah, main it, usage. It, it's is a list, which is like also like, yeah, not as intuitive, I guess. Yeah. And the list element could be like not of the same length. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which... Oh, I see. So that's, that could be useful possibly compared to, um, and that's why on the a few slides on I, I want I have a question about like okay like why would you ever use split when you could use the group by uh, <laughs> syntax and that's a good I mean that's a good point because uh, you know I guess if you're doing aggregations uh, you maybe don't have to worry about the list being different lengths but if you're just doing 
Well, I, I guess we'll get there. I'll get there. I um, think the <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um so yeah, split is pretty cool. Uh and so the way it works, just to kind of try and visualize it, is that uh it takes a vector and a, a factor um of the same length and then returns a list where each element uh corresponds to like a level of the factor yeah. uh, that contains each element of x. So that's a little abstract. But you can I see need here. convert also like because you say in the book like it doesn't specify it's a vector uh, for example a factor mm -hmm. when it has like yeah. you know the name and the burgers and the, the food yeah. the spam the eggs and it convert the um, the second the second vector to a vac uh, a factor automatically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually you can call it on lists too you don't have to like you the first yeah. argument can be a list um but then it gets really crazy yeah um. So yeah, so just this kind of simple example um, where we have a vector of x, which is just a bunch of values between 0 and 1. And we want to create a list that shows which uh, interval each element uh, falls into in x. So we can use find interval to generate the names, basically, of the intervals, the categories. So interval 1, interval 2, interval 3, interval 4. And then if we ask x to split, x into intervals, it returns this function. So that's just matching uh, the values in x that uh, and their corresponding values in, in the factor. Um, and so it has some cool applications. Here, so here's this exercise 5.14 that uh, kind of yeah. me a little bit. Um, and I, you know, I think one of the reasons I found it difficult was because I was a little bit confused about what he was asking us to do. And um, because he said he want, wanted to set theoretic union. Uh, yeah, which... I, this is computer science stuff that I do not know. But like, I think, I think yes, you're correct. This is a map already. Uh, yeah. 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 But um, like the way to solve it. But so the challenge, I guess the two, the challenge of this is you want, you have these two lists. Uh, each with named vectors, uh, or sorry, I guess they're not named vectors. It's a list with two elements, each each named uh, A, B, C, and A. And you want to return a list that has, I guess, I think the maximum value in each category, I think is basically what we're, he meant in this case by set theoretic union. I couldn't tell if that was a, an error or if that uh, is actually what that is. But um, so to to do that, we can create our factor, which I've named categories from the names of the lists. Um, so we concatenate uh, X and X and Y and then create a factor of the names. So now we have a, a, a vector of length four, which is our, which just says A, B, C, A, and that corresponds to the elements in uh, this list uh, Z. And then we can use split uh, and ask it to split the elements in Z into the categories in the variable categories. But it's very important to call name and on list um, for the for reasons I'll show yeah, on the next slide. On the, on the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and so then you can then if you just take the max of each each element in that uh, list, you get the uh, I guess the set theoretic union. I don't know. I think I use it reduce, but it's probably the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think this does bring out some kind of quirks with split. Which is that if you call split on a list, it returns a nested list. So here you can see I did the same thing, but didn't uh, unlist Z. And so then you like the output is like kind of difficult to interpret. Even it's like list. Yeah, it recursively uh, go to the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so then you end up like this bad list uh, subset one is like a list, which is the first element of a bigger list. So it's it's kind of a mess. So you don't want to do that. I think typically unless you really are doing it purposely. You don't want to call it split on a list. I um, mean, and so here you can see that ends up not even working because you can't uh, call yeah. uh, apply on this nested list. Or you will have to uh, unlist the first element. Yeah, yeah. I mean, remove the first, simply extract the first element and then call it on the max. Yeah. Which, yeah, I don't you know. You could do, you... yeah, that, yeah, I guess that works. Um. Uh, and so you can call split on name vectors, but it, it gets a little messy. Um, and so I, I would also recommend, I think, unnaming the, 
the first argument, the X argument, uh, unless you really want to keep the names for some reason. Uh, but here you can see like you end up like with the name from the factor, which is in the list. So like dollar sign A and then the, the names from the vector are still in the vector. So you have like dollar sign A, A you know, there's too many A's. Uh, this way does still work, but it, it just, uh, I think the way it represents it is not uh, very intuitive. So I would, you know, if you split, I'd say unname, unlist. Um, and then, of course, the, I think the a big use of split, especially probably before dplyr uh, was developed, was to perform uh, grouped aggregations on data frames. And so here's an example of that where using map and split. So you, uh, you know, I can have this function that just asks for the minimum, median, mean and maximum, and then uh, you map that onto a list uh, generated by split, and that list is just the uh, elements in each species category. So, you know, the split returns a list of all the satosa, I guess, flowers, all the uh, all the, the virginica flowers and all the versicolor flowers, and then the map uh, function gets applied to each element of that list. So you get a nice grouped aggregation. Um, and so here's the same thing with dplyr. I guess I left off uh, the, the mean in this one. But, uh, uh, you know, same same deal. This returns a tibble instead of a, a list, which is, you know, might be, you know, probably is generally more useful. And I, I think it's a good question, like Olivia was just talking about, like, why you know, why would we want to use split um, when we have these other packages? Sometimes I have run into uh, packages outside the tidyverse that don't have a, I guess, a method for the grouped uh, group by tidyverse function. And so then split is useful because it, it allows you to kind of mimic that functionality. I don't know why else you would use it. Olivier had mentioned that uh, if you want to return a list uh, where everything has like, where the, um, each element of the list is not of equal length, then maybe you'd want to use split instead of yeah. Group five. I mean, split work on a <clears throat> it will it will return your list, but I think like the correct like if you go back to your previous um like this one? uh no the next one <clears throat> oh. this one like uh the the base r equivalent will be an aggregate. Mm, I don't know what's behind yeah. aggregate. Well, yeah. it does aggregate choose because like what you are doing is you are aggregating by spaces and you want mm -hmm. to return a new value by the aggregate you want and mm -hmm. uh it's the, the, the there should be like a multiple function that return like the mm -hmm. main medium and max and, and you can do I, that with an aggregate but um that. yeah i mean the other oh. question the other answer is like probably like if you're confident with deploy you should use deploy yeah, I mean, I don't see any trouble using that. Uh, other points, like it's maybe in. I mean, the point where like you should maybe not use deep. I mean, the only point like it's behind the scene. What's deployer is doing is like meta programming with lazy evaluation. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the spaces mm -hmm. like here yeah, in your function, mm -hmm. um, it's do very kind of magic that I don't know exactly how it works. Mm -hmm. To know like spaces is a column here yeah from the data yeah which is like and the same with sepal length it's because like you have passed this group by function mm -hmm. that's uh it like uh it's not best r syntaxes um even if it will probably work like if you do iris deployer group by iris um mm -hmm. dollar sign spaces it will i think it will work too i think it, i think that works yeah but, but yeah, that's yeah. a good a good point. Uh, but, so deploy see, the yeah. timers has different naming conventions. Yeah, you are like yeah. specifying the yeah. name uh, directly, and if yeah. you go back here, the name of the column, and here, yeah. you know, it's 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 a it knows that it's an object that it targeted. Yeah. And for example, like I don't know if you ever use like the um the bang 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 i don't know like yeah you can you can <laughs> it's inside of l long i i can't know like i'm not a yeah. huge expert into um tidyverse but sometimes you also want to keep the spaces as a characters mm. 
Mm, okay, interesting. And there is this way in Erlang, uh, let's say like your space is here. Sometimes you just want, let's say like, you're going to pass it like as a name, like let's say like in your summarized stuff, mm -hmm. inside of min, you want min spaces or min. Uh, like right, right, right. Okay. And then, so it does not know like it's an object you are assigning, but the new characters. Let's see, interesting. And Tidyverse have this, I mean, I think they have like the consistent way of doing it, is, which is the bang, bang, bang. But, uh, oh, let me... oh, so is that a package? Is it the package? Is how long? How long? How long? I, I okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll look at. I'll look at that. It's it's the it's the basic package between the Tardivers that try to make other like uh design choice uh around how you pass uh object mm -hmm. and this yeah. is uh and it has a function that's bang bang bang. <laughs> I don't remember the name <laughs> of it. Let me check. How long? Bang bang bang. And then, um, uh, bang, bang, bang. I, you, so yeah. you can see that in sometimes uh, in cards, but like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think in general, this, the, the tidyverse style is probably like a little more easier and less onerous to type. Like, I think it is kind of a pain to have to like type the name of the uh, data frame and then the, you know, like when you, when you could just type the column. But yeah, there are definitely. I mean, I, I don't do too much uh, meta programming because I'm not smart enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's it's definitely something good here. Like it makes your yeah. very readable, and yeah. uh, it should be like very not. I mean, if you were like doing like it, it's very like yeah. The the it's it's nearly look like SQL, and yeah. uh, and and even better. But like yeah, it it can sometimes be dangerous. But yeah, I mean. If you know it, no worries. Um, so yeah, moving on, I guess, to uh, order and sort. Also, you know, some fun fun functions here. Uh, so order, and I get them mixed up all the time. So hopefully this, this puts an end to that. Uh, so order is a function that returns a vector that lists the indices corresponding to values in X, which is the, the argument to order. And sort just returns X uh, sorted in a particular way so uh well, you, that's important to remember so order gives you indices and sort just returns the vector so they they are related i think probably sort uses order if i had to guess and, or maybe there's some secret uh kind of c code or something underneath it but um so order you can see in the first example if you call order on this vector which is uh 10 20 30 50 and 40 so you 50 and 40 are not in the sending order if you call order, you can see that it then uh, gives you indices uh, corresponding to the, uh, the how the values uh, in that vector would be ordered if they were in ascending order. So one, two, three, five, because 40 is lower, and then four, because 50 is the yeah. highest. Maybe I don't remember correctly, but I think you mentioned like one, if you limit the number of sorts you want, I think like order need to generate all the indexes, and I'm not sure sort will need, but I'm I'm unsure. Like, mm, that's a good. I know. I there, know there's the a very that. corner cases like uh, mm -hmm. in optimization, but like I think it was like, eh, who cares? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, so sort you can see if you call sort on the same vector, it just gives you the vector uh, that you that that you pass to it, but reordered in ascending uh, ascending. Order. And I think the one argument to both of these, I think, is called descending, or no, sorry, decreasing. And you can label it can be true or false. And if you want uh, the order to go up, you make decreasing false. And if you want it to go down, you make it true. Uh, so one consequence of this, I guess, is that uh, a vector subsetted by uh, order called on the vector is just equivalent to sort. So that's kind of mm -hmm. a common um, equivalency there. Uh, you can use order to return rankings. So just calling order uh, on on it the same vector twice yeah. basically uh, returns a ranking of the uh, of the elements in that vector. So here you can see like uh, element one is the lowest, element two is the uh, second lowest, element three is the third lowest, element uh, four is the fifth lowest or the highest in this case, and element five is the uh, fourth. Uh, lowest. So you can see that's like the opposite of uh, yeah. or no, I guess I guess in this case it's the same because of the way I constructed the vector, but there, I think there are cases where you would call it 
and it would return a different order. Um, so rank uh, does the same thing. Uh, and also, like it takes some, uh, it's more explicit or you handle ties. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's a good, yep. Yeah. So rank does the same thing. You can uh, ask it to resolve ties in certain pre specified ways. Yeah. I it's guess if like you the, had your uh, own, but... like your own kind of special way to resolve ties, then maybe you'd want to use order and you could do. Yeah, in, uh, in the book, you use like this trick, like adding a, yeah. a, a small noise to reorder them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Duplicated is uh, another useful function that just yeah. uh, returns a logical vector indicating whether an element and in, in, in X is repeated. Um, and one thing I guess that comes up in, in one of the exercises is that, uh, so say you have a vector that's, you know, one, one, two, duplicated will return false for the first one, but true for the second one. So uh, the, it, um, the, the first time something occurs, it doesn't count as a duplicate. It's only the subsequent times. Yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. So here's just like a, an example where you have a vector of random numbers between one and 10. And uh, you can see that most of them aren't duplicates, but some are towards the end there, which makes sense. Um, I don't know why I wrote the second code block here. Uh, match uh, x. To, I don't know. I don't know what I just, was trying yeah, to demonstrate. It matched the first. It's duplicate. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, and match seven seven. I don't know why it's like. Okay. I don't know why I thought that was useful. I should see um, that. So it would be. Easier. I think one of the exercises was asking us to demonstrate the utility of uh. Yeah. Of match calling match uh and and unique and I I'm not I think I maybe thought. I, I didn't have a good answer. I think I've done this one also. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, you know. Um, so here's another approach to that same exercise, exercise 5.14, but just using <laughs> order and duplicate. Um, so no, no splitting. Uh, so you can order a list by its names attributes. So that was kind of the key takeaway here. And another kind of uh, facet of order is that you can order on multiple uh, indices at the same time. So here we have the same deal where we have A, uh, B, mm -hmm. C, and A. We combine them. So we have this list that's, uh, you know, A, B, C, and A, and one, two, three, and four. Um, I want to order this list first by names and then by value so that I end up with the highest uh, value first. Oh, and then you pick the, and then, okay. yeah, and then the, and then the lower values second so um and you remove the duplicate name okay yep so if you uh if you order uh kind of a cool thing you can say order so by this and then by this oops so order in this case by names and then by uh numeric value and if you do that you can actually specify using the second argument decreasing whether or not you want uh the uh I'm not sure how to put it. Each you you can have you can have you can order first by the increasing value in one uh, dimension and then a decreasing value in the second dimension oh, if yeah. you specify a vector. Oh, you have done that because you wanted the same order. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and but if you do that, you have to use this method equals uh, radix. Well, I don't know. Radix to get the yeah. I don't. I, I'm not sure. It has to. I think. Um. Yeah. I don't. I'm not sure why. That's oh, yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting problem, no worries. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it, uh, if you do need to kind of have this, and that happens a lot actually, you need to have uh, have something ordered in, all, in multiple dimensions. You can you can do that with order. Uh, tabulate another tabulate kind of useful awesome. helper, yeah, helper function that just returns uh, the number of occurrences of each unique value yeah. in X. So in this case, you know, we have this uh, vector of. I don't know, maybe 10 uh, elements. Yeah, fall two. We have fall two. Yep. And we see that. Uh, fall two, one, three. Yep. Oh, it's like, yeah. So two, well, I think sense? I use table more, but yeah. Uh, ta tabulate called on X returns. Uh, one, it two. counts. Why, why are there zeros in the return? I, I and uh, what, what is, uh, I guess it's one, two. So I think this is. Uh, well, I think you have four, it's two. Filling in, it's filling in the values that don't occur. Three, so this, yeah, three, yeah. three, two, one, four, 
yeah. zero five, and uh, it feel like. But I think this is an argument like you can pass, uh, and I think table will not do that. For example, if we try yeah. table, uh, so I do think it's kind of annoying that tabulate. I think tabulate should be I return like a named vector. I think it should return a named vector. Uh, but yeah. So if you if want, you try table. I think it will do it. It'll give a name. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, I think it's confusing. But, I, so, but in this case, it, it's like there are zero ones, I guess, and and there and there are zero fives. So that's why there are zeros. But yeah, so yeah, I think all del them and rename. Okay. Um, fine. and in this exercise, I guess that's the point of this exercise yeah. is that if you want the names, you got to do them yourself. So okay. uh, here we have a, a vector of a bunch of different letters, and uh, I get kind of this yeah. pretty result where it gives us uh, uh, how many letters are in each. Uh, how many times? I kind of think table do that, that for you. Table, okay, table, okay, table. I'm not sure, but like, but it's good to do the exercise anyway. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that's useful. Um. Just a I'm note, I guess. Here, I'm setting drops all attributes, even names. Yeah. I think. Um. So that's something to keep in mind. Um. And then here, I think here are some of the more interesting exercises at the end that um, I didn't think really fit in anywhere in particular, but you know, we're kind of interesting, I thought. Um, so here's one. Oh, you put he a, you had a name to, uh, and then, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, so, so here he wanted us to replace okay. all the missing values with uh, interpolated values from this spline function. So one way to do that is to generate a spline of the same length. Uh, yeah. Uh, pass it, so uh, this line here, uh, the yeah. subsetting line is actually subsetting the uh, value that spline is returning. So spline is returning a, a named list. In this case, it only has one element named X. So I'm taking all the X's and then uh, just uh, taking the values yeah. in that big list that correspond to the missing values yeah, in my uh, in Yeah, because you want to fill the index. Okay. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Because because here we're using the replacement the replacement version of this. Uh, this subsetting function here. Do you need the is in angle? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, what's, could I do that another way? Um, I guess I could have just put that in here. You know, I didn't have to. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I I'm fine. Like, it's it, good. Yeah. I think it's good practice sometimes to, mm -hmm. to, to start the index first, then check it. If it's do what it does, you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And also sometimes like the index, you are going to call them multiple times. So yeah. if you are generating, you are not generating another time. It's, it, yeah, you have pros yeah. and cons, but I, 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 yeah, it depends on my mood, but I will, I will a lot yeah. of time create the index first because I kind of want to check it sometimes because yeah. on, on, on small example, it's fine, but on big example, sometimes you want to have like a quick check on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I agree. Yeah, and I guess here we did end up calling it uh, twice. Yeah. So twice. See. <laughs> yeah, we save save some some typing. Um, and here's a another exercise that I thought was interesting, but didn't like that clearly it, relate to any of It's type, but also like if you want to modular our function and change it, it's easier. To change, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good point. So I will lower like the error you can do. Uh, and so yeah, here's just a uh, uh, use. Of um, yeah. this rank function, I guess I should have put this back with the rank, uh, but yeah, to generate the Spearman rank coefficient. And I, I don't think there's anything kind of surprising uh, going on here. One thing that comes up later in the function chapters is that he uh, he wants us to always put in our functions uh, these kind of checkers, these these uh, yeah. these if else statements or other kind of control. Uh, flow elements to make sure that the inputs to the function are what we're expecting. So in this case, if x and y aren't the same length, uh, then you get a warning that they're. Yeah, I don't remember. That. Did you say like why you prefer if else over if here? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I uh, I guess you could just use if. Yeah, is if I mean here I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I don't know if if is vectorized or not, but I guess here it doesn't matter because it's yeah. That's but thing, I, but yeah, I don't remember. I think like this is where like you want like this kind of mm. um, stop if else or something like that. Right. Yeah. I never yeah. remember the name of the function that's provide you an exit. Uh, that's break yeah. the function and then return the. Yeah. I mean, you so can that... you can do if something break, 
but I think like the stop if net, or I don't know the name of the function, do that for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think in this case, what would happen? I think it would. Uh, I think the function would return something, but you would just get this warning because I think the yeah, recycling it would, rule it would work. We just would recycle. Get the yeah, you would just yeah. get the warning. So, and I, yeah, I guess it's a design more of a design question. Okay, like, do you want it to not work at all, or to do you know? I guess in this yeah. case, you probably want it to not work at all, because I think it's nonsensical if there are different lengths. Uh, yeah, so that, that's okay. all I have to present. Um, I don't know if, uh, if the splits <laughs> were challenging. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought this, and you know, I mean, I, I, I got a lot of error also. Oh yeah, like on, on in the uh, five uh, point seventeen. Let me look that up. Uh oh yeah, and you know, so I I didn't even do all these. I think I got about halfway through them. But uh, here, let me pull up my my responses to them. Yeah, no worries. I'll stop. I have them uh, right it, so I know. Oh. <laughs> I mean, somewhere uh, easy, like the indexing, like how do you remove element like at the end of it was good, but all the good show is like the um the C uh, empty, like even the first one, for example, mm -hmm. the first one I was wrong. Where's because like uh, C yeah. empty return uh, an empty stuff. Then when you are indexing with empty return nothing, like, I mean, yeah, X, like not providing, uh, I don't know, like, not like the, um, for example, like this one, uh, can type it. So, oh yeah, yeah, just before I passed into the chat some very crappy content, but it explained a bit, like I'm saying crappy because like it's a lot of cookie and, and it's like, <laughs> It's like a nightmare of accepting everything and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Your brothers probably get like some some disease if you go to the website. But <laughs> they explain they explain like uh, kind of the bang bang and they give an example like where, where you can use it. Oh, good. Wait, let me... uh, that was like when I, I found quickly. But yeah, like... Um... Yeah. Huh, interesting. Uh, I, I, I'm going to look at, I mean, I might not look at that one in particular, if I don't want to get the disease, but no, no, just, I, I will look it up. I, I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> it's like the, the, the user, not user a, experience not a nice of website. this website is bad. It's bad. Um, yeah, this, so let's like see, on 517. This, this yeah, X I mean, yeah, I agree. Versus X, uh, this one, for example, I was, I was incorrect. Because uh, I didn't know like this returns something very particular. Mm -hmm. I thought it re it returned something like uh, so. This is more gotcha. Uh, because like this one returned a null. Yeah, it's the same uh, as calling it on. And null. then you index with null, which makes sense. Then that it does not provide the same. Yeah. And this is not in. This is not the same that null. Yeah. So yeah, this one was very, like kind of. Uh, I was wrong on this one. Yeah, I, I think most of these I didn't have strong intuitions. But yeah, I guess that like that first one makes sense if you think about it. Like in the first one, you're basically subsetting on nothing. Uh, yes. While in the second one, you're subsetting on everything. Like yeah, yeah on everything. Yeah. So it, it yeah. Um, so like, yeah, sense. like just like the C. This the concatenate empty mm -hmm. is returning something, so you are indexing on something while the just uh index just using like the bracket mean like you do not have an operand. Like yeah. if you think about it, like uh, the function uh it's just an unary function. Uh, that's how I in, in interpreted it. Yeah, uh, I mean I, I I struggled with a lot of these. I think I only went through. Uh, one, two, three. Four. I have done all. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to do all of them. Oh my gosh! Not all of the exercises, but at least this one. And I do some others here, but yeah. Like for example, I definitely didn't didn't do like. I reproduce with match and unique all the version of union sets at different oh, elements yeah. at equal. Oh, no, I, I didn't do that. Yeah, that just seems But this is boring. definitely a good exercise. I yeah. will try to do fun places. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they are definitely like just exercise to make you think a bit more what you are doing, mm -hmm. which I think they're good, but like I will not like... Uh... 
I don't yeah. Know. And I think the some of them the, are super easy, but yeah. Yeah. And the subsetting and the difference between the double bracket and the single bracket and the different usage on lists and vectors is pretty confusing. So I think this uh, uh yeah, I think Ad Adlai Wicca, I mean advanced air is good. Yeah. The the part uh, on it is good, if I remember correctly. I just have the first edition, so I don't know about the second one, but um oh. On the first edition, it was very good, but uh, I assume the second is also good. Um, There's a second edition of this of this book, of the Advanced R. Oh, oh, of Advanced yeah. R. Oh, okay. Yeah. I no, the, okay. no, this is yeah. just one edition. Not this one. Not this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I think I have the second edition. Yeah, I, I, I just had the first one a long time ago. Uh, there is some that are evidence, like the, for example, uh, the X bracket one and the x character one obviously they are different because like the the third the third one yeah yeah I, those are different i got wrong on the second one yeah but it too. makes sense because it's vectorized yeah. so it's basically call it multiple times the first one mm -hmm. so this yep. was mostly me being stupid that this makes sense yep. the third one was easy i will say this minus one um Oh, um, I uh that one. So I think it's like basically one... you are removing the first one. Yeah. Then we are removing this first one, and but the first one is always the same. So this one I was like, I'm sure I understand that. Like the first one, like x yeah. bracket, uh, concatenate minus one minus one yeah. minus one. What happens there? Wait, let's see. I didn't. I didn't check that one. Uh... I checked that one, and it's just like let's say if you have x uh from one to ten. And yeah. this one, it will just return in like to two to ten. Huh. So they are the same. So they are like the equivalent. Interesting. Huh. And interesting this one, I, I don't know why. Interesting. Huh. I guess I can probably ask on social network and, and be yeah. mad. I mean, it would be because it, it can't remove the first element three times, you know, like I uh, think maybe apparently, it's. Just, I don't know. That's good question. Yeah. I will ask. Yeah, it's weird. Huh. The, the five one makes sense. The um, zero one two na. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I guess I like also zero not indexing. Because yeah. Yeah. X the zero return empty makes sense also. One two three super easy. Yep. Um. The one with the x zero minus one minus two makes sense. Then the Second one, the X uh, with uh, brackets. Wait, what does what does that return? What is uh... the the first one is good, like the what uh, what it's what you expect. Uh huh. Like it will uh -huh. not return nothing for zero, then it will return the <clears throat> the list minus one, then the list minus two. So let's say like you have X to one to ten, it will return uh, three to ten. Interesting. If I'm okay, correct. Yep. I just yep. I just try. I just tried it too. Yep. But if you add any, you get an error. Because you cannot pass any with negative value. And mm. this is kind of a gotcha. You need to know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. While it works with positive value, because uh, it will just run a, any. So I will say it's a bit in I don't know if it's logic or not, but uh, that's it. That, I, was, I, I was wrong on this one. <laughs> yeah, well, that, might just be, that might just be a rule. And not like a, there might not be a good reason for it. I, am. I don't know. Um, the the next one with x bracket n a and x uh, makes sense. This one, uh, the x uh with false true and two, it makes sense also because it's coerced to integers, so it makes sense. Uh, the this one I was wrong. Uh, the next one, like uh, x bracket, the x minimum x, which mm. return necessarily everything false. And oh, right, yeah, I was expecting NA, but in, inside of it, it returns something empty, which makes sense, but like uh, I was wrong. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, so no, they're all good to do. <laughs> yeah, they after are good that, to they do. become easier. Like, I think, like, the uh, the yeah. first one are the the kind of gotcha, and the next one are more like yeah it makes sense. I mean, 
you understood what they does like for example difference between sort and order we have seen that right, yeah. the split we have seen that in the book how to get rid of the seven element from the list or mm -hmm. uh seven eight from the list or yeah. inside of other, all of that just have been done i mean we have read about it into the chapters but the first one we not necessarily have read about it it just yep. like gotcha you have to learn by yeah making a mistake so that's yeah. why i think this exercise is like good it's just but because like that gotcha yeah. i know fully like you will get understand it. But, yeah. yeah yeah no I, I i it's a good chapter i think i i think it's very i mean what i will get from it is like i will keep in mind when i do something more complex i will try do a quick example a test that's protect me against that yeah that's yeah. all what I learned. That's a it. good, yeah. That's a good, a good lesson. But yeah, um, yeah. and that's it. Uh, well, great. Thanks for listening. And yeah, good, and, good presentation. And, yeah. and I, I think it was good. Well, like I've said, no need to go like through everything and just okay. point like what you think is important and what is not. Okay. It's yeah, I think for the future, especially sense. just because some of these chapters are so I have are quite long and have a lot of exercises. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the, uh, like the the things that I think are the most interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and you know, like at one time you think something is interesting, you don't get it, and then later you, but you have read it, so yeah. it's, it's somewhere yeah. in your mind, hopefully. Yeah. Um. Well, great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot for doing it. Yeah. I will just tap end.